for the last part of our interview, I'd like to ask you a little bit more about how you feel about the future uh, that's coming out of out of this world. So uh, you mentioned before that a lot of the work that needs to be done on rule of law right now is getting people on the same page and overcoming the cultural issues. Uh, can you expand a little bit more on that thought? It's so complicated because if you want to have a message heard, mm -hmm. you have to be sure to try to be a messenger whose message will be heard or can be considered. Mm -hmm. If someone is too abrasive or too aggressive or too something, you have to take that into account some way. I mean, somehow or another, we need we need a whole range of we need a whole range of of activists, and I call anybody that wants to make the world better an activist. But 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 an activist can range from someone that is willing to go out and put their lives on the line in a demonstration, as they have in many many countries where uh, injustices occur, uh, including ours. Yeah. Uh, and it can range for, from somebody who sits in their judicial office and writes opinions that are fair and, and try to impose a rule of law that requires a just result and, and treats people equally. Yeah. So there, there, there's a whole range of that, but, but trying to get people together to kind of reach agreement on what are the basic principles of a rule of law uh, it is difficult and it's difficult because you have to be able to communicate with people and and um, that's hard when you're trying to bridge cultural differences which are extremely important and severe there has to be a way um, I don't know, independence of the judiciary. There has to be certain principles that I think mm -hmm. can, can be used to, 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 to and I'm struggling here because it is a struggle, but, but for example, independence of a judiciary, I cannot imagine a group not agreeing, at least in, in, in form, that it is imperative to have a judiciary that is going to treat people equally and not be corrupted by money or power or, 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 or anything else. Right. Uh, other things, but, but then you get bogged down when you get to, uh, when you get to other things. Uh, participation in government. I mean, how do you deal with, with that? Um, domestic violence. Uh, is something that it seems to me is another issue that that everybody should be able to get behind. But yet, I'm aware that some cultures believe, I suppose, I don't know, they, st I guess they still do, that it is perfectly, I mean, I remember being in a country and doing a tour, uh, sort of a panel discussion in various cities, and having a debate with one of the judges in that country who said that it wasn't rape to rape your wife because she was your wife. We need to find ways of communicating to bridge that. But there are some things that are just not acceptable uh, by, by saying that they're cultural, culturally ingrained. I'm sorry, but there are some things that violate human dignity and, and even human personhood that you cannot excuse on the basis yeah. of, uh, of, of cultural differences, in my, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I, know that's, I know that there are others who hold a different opinion and say you have to respect cultural differences, but yeah. not at the expense of, of hurting someone. I, I think, you know, it's very corny, but I guess really I go back to this whole concept of the golden rule. To, you should treat people the way you want to be treated. Yeah. You should be left alone to be whomever you want to be. 
there should be a world that's supportive of letting you be who you want to be and what yeah. you want to be and you should never ever hurt anybody else i mean and frankly i attribute that whole concept of social justice to my upbringing at in catholic schools and my experiences you know in the convent where th those were the values that we were teaching and that I would I was learning yeah um, it sounds like you have a very empathetic conception of what fundamental human rights should be um, although right now around the world because of technology and shifting political view uh, shifting political will in in both our country and around the world there, there seems to be a little bit of a change in how people are understanding fundamental human rights i'm thinking about especially here there's a, a proposal that's going to be made to the un to narrow uh, the conception of human rights what do you think are some of the most important issues in this area right now uh, particularly in regards to women's rights but just in general Gender violence. Gender mm -hmm. violence is, I, I think, what we do, we don't speak about it enough, yeah. and, and uh, we don't, we don't explain to the, to the general public how, um, how pervasive it is all over the world, and how even in our own country we are not. I, I, uh, I did a lecture. Um, at NYU, uh, and it was, uh, it was titled something like um, um, "Human Rights." I, I I thought they were already here, uh, and and it it talked a lot about uh, about the Supreme Court cases that say that police officers. Um, have the discretion as to whether or not to answer a domestic violence call or not, and, and yeah. I'm not going to go into the right. into it. But I, I think that's just uh, that that is a you know I, I think the line of cases that hold that is appalling, yeah. and uh, that needs to be changed. I think the whole um, cultural views that are held in some countries that rape is a is a is a prize of war is outrageous <laughs> yes uh and i think domestic violence needs to be addressed you, you you don't own your spouse and uh can can inflict physical or or mental or any other kind of harm upon her so i think that's one of the largest problems uh, uh in human rights that is very seldom addressed adequately because yeah. because as i think I, I i'm not the only one that pointed this out but i mean as i pointed out men don't have to deal with this issue of, of as much yeah gender violence they are not a every woman that walks through uh, and and again this isn't something that's original with me but every woman that walks through an alley at night has a fear that men who walk through that same alley do not have uh, of, of being raped, of being physically uh, uh, assaulted. Yeah. And so we, we need to engage men in this debate to eliminate gender violence. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't understand the mentality that permits <laughs> fragile people to be abused. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we should do something about it. So my next question was going to be, what what can we do about it, especially as lawyers, international lawyers, uh, to make an impact on women's it. rights, um, but also domestic? We need to be more obnoxious about it. We need to keep talking about it. We, we cannot, you know, we need to, we need to follow the example of all the people who have been walking in the streets because of police brutality, for example, peacefully. I, I, uh, but, but we can't let people forget uh, the, the magnitude of this problem. And we should call it out whenever we see it. You cannot hide. And we need to encourage any of our sisters that are experiencing it to do something about it. And we need to support shelters. And I mean, there, there are 
um, we need to bring lawsuits. We need we need not to laugh at at uh, at jokes uh, at, which are told at the expense of women because we're afraid that the partners are not going to uh, uh, make us partners or whatever. And I'll tell you something else. I people don't respect people who don't stand up for their rights. So that I I, I really. I really think that if you are sincere and you and you, and you s stand up for something, even in a group of of people, that you'll be respected for it. Assuming that you do it with as much charm as you can muster, <laughs> you have to again. You have to remember that the messenger has to be accepted before the message can be heard. Yeah. And, um, so it's a complicated process, but we all have to engage in it. I mean, it would be much nicer to be able to s just say, that is the stupidest thing I ever heard, and you are an ignoramus. You can't do that because that's not <laughs> going to change them. That's just going to solidify them. And I don't know what the answer is because, believe me, I, I'm not really very good at this. <laughs> I have a tendency to sometimes not be the messenger that I would like to be. <laughs> But I, 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 I continue to try to be better and more tactful at it. And I think that we all have to be, but you cannot ignore it. And that's what I think we've done for way too long, this whole issue of, of gender violence. And we have to do something about it. I mean, that's only one thing. I mean, that's the trouble with this world. There's so much that we have to do. And, and yeah. you, cannot, you cannot do just one thing. Let me, let me make that crystal clear. I get very annoyed at groups who are only interested in protecting or advancing their own individual group. That's not how this works. Yeah. Fundamental rights and human dignity, I don't know why I'm on this preachy thing, I apologize, but I mean, it is not, it, it is something um, that cuts across all kinds of spectrums and you have to speak out on all of the spectrums. You can't just say, I only care about it, about making sure women have the power that they deserve. No, it has to be everybody, uh, every minority, every group. Uh, so toler tolerance has to cut across the board and you have to speak out for all of it, not just one of it. Yeah, uh, so is there anything that you're looking forward to on any timeline? What are, what are you hopeful about? Oh, well, I'm hopeful that the world will get better incrementally. I recognize I'm a realist. Mm -hmm. I doubt that there will be any dramatic breakthroughs, although you never, I never, uh, I would love, I mean, I certainly would embrace any kind of dramatic improvement in the world, uh, but that it would get a little bit better and that we'd be able to understand how to communicate better so that the values that I espouse will be understood by those who don't seem to have the same values or who seem to have the same values, but somehow or another don't seem to see how they're not being advanced by some. This is complicated. <laughs> to cut through the cognitive dissonance. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, yes. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to just enjoy, continuing to enjoy life. I mean, on a personal basis, I got on a paddleboard in the Hague in one of the, oh. <laughs> one of the canals. I did stand up for long enough to have a picture taken, but by my friend who was on the other board, but mostly she brought along a little bench. So I rode. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the end of this quarantining and the coronavirus yeah. thing. Uh, I'm looking forward to going back to real work because we have been working virtually mm -hmm. and I do believe that these Zoom calls are consuming much more of my life than my ordinary work. But anyway, at least we're communicating and I think that's a good thing. I'm looking forward to people not getting sick anymore. Yeah. Uh, the vaccine. Um, I just just making life better for everybody. I'd just like to thank you again for joining us today. 
uh, you've been incredibly insightful um, and as a law student, but also as a, as a human looking to pursue a career in international law during these uncertain times. I've, I've learned a lot from our conversation today. I, I do wish our meeting could have been in person, um, but I hope that the silver lining from our conversation being held over Zoom today is that it will be more accessible to, to more future lawyers and to more people. I hope you have a safe and wonderful rest of the year. Thank you so, so much. Thank you.